Hey everybody, it's Eddie J on Crypto for GrowMyBank.tv. I hope you're having a good one. There is so much to get through today. Come here, Stitchy. Say good morning, everybody. Come here. Up here. You don't want to get up? He just wants his pets. Um, so let's start off with this. And it's very important that we actually pay attention. So we've got a number of banks that are actually reporting their numbers today with Larry Fink, BlackRock, being on CNBC at 9 a.m. I might do another show for that. I don't know. Or I might save that conversation for our members later on today at the, you know, at the other, you know, at the members only video. We have JP Morgan, BlackRock, Wells Fargo, Citigroup, State Street and Bank 7 all reporting. The reason why it's important that we pay attention to this is because they could all be mentioning how they're handling Bitcoin. So we should be paying attention. All right. What else is up? Watch out, Stitchy. Um, what else is going on? We have Voyager Digital. Voyager Digital recovered $484 million for its creditors, right, from FTX, Three Arrows Capital, and insurance that they hold for directors and officers. That's actually a very big deal because that means that people, some people are gonna get paid back and that's always a good thing. Something else we should be paying attention to. Bitcoin's fees raised to as high as $8.50. Why is that? Ordinal's traffic. We really think it's because of Ordinal's traffic. Because I didn't know that Bitcoin became the biggest NFT platform. I have to verify that, but I think that's true. I've seen it in a couple of places. I'm kind of like, wow. So now I just have to dig into the numbers to see if it's, you know, factual. But Ordinals has taken off. That's going to be a very big deal. Because like I said, if you have more people holding Bitcoin, right? Michael Saylor is holding on to his 1% of Bitcoin out there. How's that traffic going to handle? I wasn't even thinking when I when I started thinking about traffic, I wasn't even thinking about, you know, the fees involved. So that's a very interesting topic. Something else that happened. Dapper Labs had major problems back in 2022 leading into 2023. They're the makers of Top Shot for the NBA. And they had all these problems. And they had major layoffs. And something I noticed I didn't hear anything about an SEC you know, investigation. I saw nothing. In all my reporting, I looked back through all my notes, I saw nothing. But apparently they were being investigated. And even more importantly, they were being investigated and then out of nowhere, the case just got dropped by the SEC, just dropped. No fanfare, no nothing, just went away. I'm wondering what happens to Dapper Labs now as they start to recover you know what i mean it's just what's going on over there because wow 2023 was not a good year for them and it makes me think about what's going on with the sec because that's kind of crazy at least to me it is to me it's kind of crazy because now i don't know if you've heard but all this fanfare about you know bitcoin and nefarious people illicit transactions blah 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 Going after KuCoin for, you know, AML, KYC, anti-money laundering, know your customer. Guess who else is being investigated? Morgan Stanley. Morgan Stanley is one of the premier investment banks in the world. And they're being, their wealth division is being investigated because there could be money laundering going, going on because they may not have, allegedly, they may not have um, investigated their customers enough to know who their customer is and where their wealth comes from. I'm just saying, it's not Bitcoin. It's not crypto. It's a straight up normal fiat transaction level stuff. It makes you wonder if, if, if crypto is this much and cash, especially the US dollar is this much, you know, of in the illicit market. We need to stop the fanfare around that, right? Don't you think? Just saying. Maybe put some work with us to make better parameters of operation. That'd be nice. Something else that's going on. The difficulty level for mining Bitcoin went up 4%, which would also drive into the fees, in my humble opinion. But wow, 
that hash rate going up, we're, we're like what eight days away from away from the uh, the having event. Woof, that's going to be a lot. Now I said it. I, I've said it a few times. It's not that the having event is going to immediately usher in a price spike. It's the catalyst that starts everything. Right, that's what I believe is going to happen. Hey, you. So. He wants to play. You gonna sit down? You gonna come up? You gonna come up? You gonna say hello to everybody? Come here. Up. You don't wanna hop up? No? You just wanna get pet. He's such a sometimes he wants to be a ham and sometimes he doesn't. I, I don't get it. He stitch is just funny. Um so that's so when you see the having event coming and everything that's going on around it, you start to see the scarcity that happens, and that starts to that starts to hit everybody. That's what I'm talking about. You start to kick into other things. Something else that I'm paying attention to is the the problem that I think regional banks or smaller banks are going to have with keeping the rates higher for a longer period of time. They're ill-equipped to actually handle that. The larger banks are more than happy because they actually make money from it. But the smaller banks could have problems. So I'm going to be watching on that as well. And the reason why I bring that up is because when you have banking issues, crypto seems to do better. People start to see why crypto is there, especially Bitcoin, since Bitcoin is a good store of value, probably the best. Something else that happened that caught my attention. Sony Bank is thinking about doing their own stablecoin, their own fiat based stablecoin. Remember, there was that bank that said, hey, we're going to do a stablecoin and we're going to we're going to back it. Its reserves are going to be the deposits. OK, cool. Sony was like, oh. Is that how we're rolling? Okay, welcome us to the game. <laughs> Sony is one of the biggest companies in Japan. MUFG, I think, is the biggest, and then you have then you have like companies like Sony. We should be paying attention to that. Stable coins are taking off because they're just taking off. Stable coins take off because that's the middle road between certain transactions, especially DeFi, which the SEC seems to be gunning after. I don't see how the SEC is going. If if Uniswap said, okay, we're going to leave the United States, we'll cut off the United States from working. You want to know what's happening? You're going to see a whole bunch of people move, all of a sudden move to Palau digitally. You're going to see a whole bunch of VPNs happening. You're going to see a whole bunch of stuff happening. And that'll be it. You'll have a company that leaves the United States. Those jobs will leave the United States. That all that money, all those fees, all those taxes, all of that, leave the United States because you want to you want to investigate Uniswap. But okay, but it's fine. Do you do you you do you? I think it's going to be major egg on the SEC's face. I think it's going to be major egg on the SEC's face. I think they're barking up the wrong tree. I think they're going to have problems. It's hard to go after the platform when it's the company you want to if you want to do something you want to have impact you don't like how things are happening you want to say things are securities go after those projects then go after those projects because i can tell you if uniswap leaves the united states uniswap is going to blow up like it, it's taking a dip now what is it 30 percent? if it leaves the united states i think it's just going to blow up i think everybody's still going to flock to it even more then there's a problem then there's a problem because they can say, okay, we won't do business in the United States anymore. Bam, and they drop the hammer. I use a VPN. I paid my 250 bucks, become a digital citizen of Palau. I can now do business on Uniswap. Yeah, it's that easy. It really is that easy. Um, and there are other places that do the same thing. Just saying. Just saying. Uh, what else is going on? Animoca Brands is launching a... They say it's an inclusive NFT launch pad, or they're going to later on this summer. The reason why I think it's a, it's, a, it's a significant thing is because NFTs are not just the movement of artwork. That's not, it's not it. Think of that artwork as being your past to get in. Proof of membership and how much that is valued. I'm just saying there's there's a lot that goes on in the NFT space that people really don't dig into. 
And that right there, having a launch pad like that, that's kind of a big deal. That's very much of a big deal. So I'm, I'm liking where this is going. Now, what else is going on? BlackRock's fund saw an inflow of $192 million and following its $17.5 million in outflows, Grayscale follows up with $125 million in outflows. People need to stop guessing if, if Grayscale is going to stop, if Grayscale's hemorrhaging is going to stop. That's, I don't think that's the ticket. I think the ticket is, is that Grayscale is shed over almost, almost 50% of their Bitcoin holdings in the past three months. We need to understand why, and the factors are, Genesis needs money, they hold a lot of GPTC. Digital currency group, DCG, you know, has a lot of, has a lot of bills, they need the money, and they hold a lot of GPTC. Those are the things that we should be paying attention to. Now, if I was another company, would I swoop in and buy Grayscale? No. I'm actually thinking no, why should I? Because whatever Grayscale has, they're hemorrhaging and I'm picking up for free. I'm not paying a premium on it. So I'll just continue doing what I'm doing. And if you're BlackRock or Fidelity, well, you've got the money to handle it. So keep it moving. I'm just saying there's a there's a very big deal. I'm, I'm sitting back and I really do question the viability of Grayscale given the problems of one of its major holders, which is Digital Currency Group and Digital Currency Group's other holding, Gemini. I mean, not Gemini, Genesis. So again, something for me to pay attention to. Another thing about Bitcoin, you know, there's a one point, there's $1.5 billion in options expiring today. So I'm going to be paying attention to that as well. Now, Larry Fink being on television at 9 a.m., I'm, I'm thinking about doing another show, but I think I'm going to hold that for my members later on. So do me a favor, become a member. That's, that's what I'd like you to do. Become a member, drop me a thanks, do something. Let's get it going. We got more coming. We have got a lot more coming. But you know what we should do right now? That's right. We should get into the numbers. That's exactly it. All right, all right, all right. We got CPI, we got PPI. And I think those significantly hit the market by saying, yeah, rates are not coming down anytime soon. People are starting to factor two rate cuts. I'm saying one. I'm going on the record and I'm saying one. I've been saying it for like a week or two now. I think it's going to be one. I don't think there's going to be enough time for two. I think there's going to be one. If there are two, it's going to be rushed. And I don't think that's how Powell would want to move. So I'm thinking one. I know I'm crazy. 79 is the fear and greed index right now. Yesterday it was 76, just about before that it was 79. So we're hanging around, we're hovering within a certain space right now. I'm cool with that. Total value locked back up to 121 billion, 121.6 if you wanna be exact. Not bad, not bad. I think that's. I think those are good numbers. I want to. I want to see us get back to the two hundred range. I think that with Bitcoin having, I think with other things going on in the space, I think we can get back to two hundred billion first quarter twenty twenty five. That's what I'm thinking. Now, when you look at this number, we're still above my you know sixty nine three fifty five mark. We're at seventy thousand seven hundred sixty four. Basically along the lines of where we've been we're consolidating right here you can see it we were doing it over here and now we're doing it over here same basic spots for consolidation right there 71774 i'm just saying there's a tight there's a narrow space that's being defined and then that that space is going to explode and i think it's going to explode upward there's not enough downward pressure it would take another three months of grayscale selling, that downward pressure from grayscale selling. You know, come to think of it, maybe <laughs> it's crazy idea, crazy idea. Remember I said about I wouldn't buy them, I would just let them continue to sell and I would take over everything that way. What happens if somebody's actually doing that? What happens if that's the deal that's actually on the table? Cuts out the paperwork, all that stuff. Legal fees, all of it. 
I know, conspiracy theory. Shouldn't do that. Sorry about that. Um, if you're looking at the big board, this is what it looks like. A lot of downs. Ethereum is not where I want it to be. I want it to be in the in the four thousand range. Bitcoin, obviously, I want it to be in the seventy two, seventy three thousand range. So we're not quite where we want to be, but I think we're all. I think all of the coins are in striking distance. Dog with hat, another big down day. Um, Kronos having a having an up day. I hold a bag, but you know, I don't have. I don't hold a huge bag, right? I don't hold a huge bag because the coin really doesn't. It, to me, Kronos. When it first came out, and they were they bought the, they didn't buy the stadium. They bought the the advertising on the stadium. Oh yeah, it was it was great. It was great. They're talking about the exchange, exchange is going to do well. Blah blah blah. Yada 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 yada. But if you really stop and think about it, the Kronos coin is not just a meme coin. Get it? It doesn't do anything. <laughs> it doesn't do anything. I hold some, but it doesn't do anything. I can get rid of it and and not miss it. What does it do that any other coin doesn't do? I mean, it does less than Shiba Inu. It does less than Doge. It does less than Pepe. It does less than Bonk. Less than Book of Meme. I mean, it doesn't do anything. Just saying. It's just one of those coins. I thought it was going to do something. I thought they were going to do something and build something out of it. They didn't. It is what it is. Shib's down, but it's up a little bit from the 27 that I thought it was a, a couple of days ago. Doge is down, but Doge is in striking distance. I think Doge is going to hit 25 cents relatively soon. Chainlink is up. They've got a lot of stuff going on, something that I definitely want to pay attention to. So I'm just sitting back and thinking about it. There's a lot There's a lot of positivity. There are a lot of places where you can make money. Look at Cardano, even Polkadot. Look at Matic. Look at near Matic at 85 cents. What is that? 85 or 88? 88 cents, right? near protocol there are a lot of spots that if you do your research you could probably make a couple of bucks in the next couple of weeks you could probably do it you could probably do it i'm thinking about it and i'm looking around and i'm kind of like yeah uniswap is down big but am i worried about uniswap not at all let's get to the big board i want to see what uniswap is doing here pretty sure they were on my list So here's Uniswap. Over the past 30 days, it's down 30%. Year to date, it's still doing better than like Polygon, single, which is barely single digits, basically zero. It's up 25%. And I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about this. I'm looking at it. I'm kind of like, well, you know, Uniswap's found, you know, foundations, you know, they're doing well. I, like the SEC takes them to court. What's the most that's going to happen? They pay a fine. They're not going out of business. They have a rock solid business. They'll pay a fine and leave. It's not going out of business. So is this a good time to buy? If it's me, I might wait to see if it goes down a little bit, but I have no problem buying in right here. I have no problem. I would have zero problem buying in right here. Like dead serious. Um, that's so that's what I'm thinking about. Anyway, this is Eddie Joe and Crypto for GrowMyBag.tv. Hope you like what I'm doing. If you do, drop me a note. Love hearing from you guys. If you have a critique, something that can help me get better, drop me a note. I'd love to hear from you guys. Drop me a super thanks. Really show me some love. Become a member of the community. We meet every weekday night. Give each other homework. Ask each other questions. Do our do research together. That's what we're talking about. Growing the bag and hopefully learning and growing together. Anyway, this is Eddie J on Crypto for GrowMyBag.tv. I hope you have a good one. Bye-bye.